Okay, everybody, so I've pretty much got my wiring figured out for the S10. And I wanted to kind of share with you what I've done a little bit. Um, I'm not going to get into a comprehensive video about how to do the wiring harness because there's honestly a lot of different ways to do it. And uh, depending on what you're doing with your setup um, is really going to determine how you're going to do your harness. So I'm just going to kind of go over the basics real quick and uh, kind of tell you what I did. And then hopefully that gives you some information and uh, let you make an educated decision on how you would like to approach it. And uh, I'm also going to kind of do like a lessons learned video um, right now where I just kind of verbally give you a bit of information, some things I've learned uh, along the way that I wish I knew before I started. And uh, that way that kind of helps you out as well. So let's first start off with what all I have under the hood. I've got a 5.3 liter motor from a 2002 Tahoe. I have a wiring harness and a computer from an 03 Tahoe. My intake here, I think, is from an 06 Escalade or something like that. I'm not really sure exactly. It was originally drive-by wire. I converted it to drive-by cable. So that's pretty much my component setup. I've got a bunch of different components. It's all Frankenstein together. Um, so the first tip that's really important that I would give you is if you're going to do this swap, get the computer, the wiring harness, the intake, the throttle body, everything all from the same engine. Um, the reason why I say that is because everything from 2000 down is the same and everything from 2003 up is the same. And the main differences um, for that would be the drive-by cable and or drive-by wire. I decided to go drive-by cable on this because I did not have the uh, throttle pedal, which you're going to need that for drive-by wire. So that was a big nightmare. I had to take a big bundle of wiring out. Actually, I'll show you the bundle of wire I had to remove to go from drive-by wire to drive-by cable. This is it. I had to remove this bundle from the computer and this bundle from the computer to go from the drive-by wire to the drive-by cable. So that's a lot of cables I had to remove. Additionally, I had to add these three sensors to the harness. So I had to remove those wires and add these wires to the harness uh, to go from drive-by wire to drive-by cable. So you can see already how many different wires that was and uh, the complexity of plugging stuff into the computer and repinning it and doing all that. And that has nothing to do with the starting system or any of that. So that's why I'm not gonna go into a deep video about how to do the wiring harness. So this is how I went about getting everything started running a fuse block. Uh, one of these is from the passenger side, one is from the driver's side, fuel injectors. The other four are just kind of, um, I'm not sure exactly where they go, and these two go to the computer. But I kind of wanted to group them in a similar grouping, that way if I have a problem, I know where to look. Probably gonna label them as well before I go ahead and tape up the harness and everything. Just put it on a piece of painter's tape and label it. Put it inside the wire loom so I can trace it later on if I need to. Okay, so on the subject of the wiring harness, I'll kind of just give you overall what I did. I found the, the uh, diagrams from my S10 and I found the diagrams from an 03 Tahoe for the C2 plug that goes into the bottom of the fuse block. And I kind of moved whatever wires I could that would plug back into the factory fuse block. From there, I ran two relays for this main power. I ran the main power up here. This is keyed ignition on, and this is gonna give power to all my pink wires. That's how this is. My orange wires, which is another thing, you get a constant hot. You can see those are going in here. I ran those right into constant hot, originally for the S10. Uh, to draw power from my uh, relays over here, I just drew it from the battery positive right here. And that's really the basics of getting the thing started. If you're doing a standalone harness, you don't need to worry about any of these cables over here. These are the original cables that are on the O3 Tahoe harness. They go up into the, the dash and the fuse box and all that stuff. And this is the S10 stuff. I just cut this off the factory harness, so I had some wire to work with. I'm gonna worry about wiring this stuff up later, because for now, I just wanted the engine to run and be able to start the thing and also get my wire all taped up uh, so I could drive the thing. And one more thing on the intake. Another thing to watch out for is the S10 has a return style fuel rail system. What that means is there's a, an inlet and an outlet for the fuel and it has a regulator right here on the rail. So 
any fuel that is not needed would just go back to the tank. This setup here that I have, the one that came from the Escalator or whatever, I'm not even sure what truck it came from. The guy just gave it to me with the motor when I bought it off Craigslist. But this is return less. So what that means is there's a regulator <clears throat> that has to be placed in line. So I ended up having to replumb my whole fuel system and uh, put an inline regulator from a Corvette to get that to work properly. Otherwise, there would have been no regulator in the system. So be aware of that if you end up, if you could find a motor or an intake that has the regulator right here, you could run all your factory S10 uh, fuel lines and stuff. Everything would just kind of plug right in. You'd be able to use it. However, if you end up with an intake that doesn't have a regulator on it, you got to replumb your whole system. Or I decided to replumb the whole system anyways. Let's put it that way. I'm sure you could have reused the lines that were there to a certain extent and reflared the tubes and bend new tubes and stuff like that. I wasn't sure how to do all that, so I just went with some AN and uh, stainless steel braided lines all the way from the uh, the fuel pump all the way up to the fuel rail. So as you can see, I've still got a few things to figure out. I've got my MAF sensor right here, and I was just putting this filter right on the end of it. And that seems to work for now, but this is gonna be pulling the heat from the engine, the engine bay right into the engine. Uh, it would be better, obviously, to run some sort of intake coming off this way and get some uh, cooler air and even doing a ram air would be better um, but for the time being that's just how I have it set up it should work like that but uh, I hope this advice uh, helps you guys out and kind of point you in the right direction as to what you want to do with your build and uh, I thank you very much for watching make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to my channel as well thank you very much